first reading is from Acts 17, verses 16 through 31. It can be found in the Red Pew Bibles on page 1097 and on the overhead. While Paul, Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicureans and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this Babel trying, a babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Aeropagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. Whereas I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's second reading, the epistle reading, comes from Peter's first letter. 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 to 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for the sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also we went he went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. 
Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. This is Jesus speaking. If you love me, you will obey what I command. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. This is why I usually say the kids can come forward, but no, don't. Keep your kids. <laughs> Keep them. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Confirmation Sunday. It's finally here, but yes, yeah, so what? You get a cake. You get some pictures. Maybe you got some gifts. It used to be in the past that people would go, but classes are done. But let me tell you, tomorrow night, youth group. Still happening. Be there. I won't be, but you, be there because it doesn't end. This isn't a graduation, you don't get a diploma. It's not the end of anything, it's simply you saying, what happened when I was that age, I'm now gonna take some responsibility for by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what Paul was talking about in this part of Acts. The readings in Acts have really been pretty easy to follow so far because it's been Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 2, Acts 1, it's all been kind of the Pentecost stuff. It's not Pentecost yet, even though we're in red, it's still the Easter season. It'll go back. We have another couple of uh, Sundays before Pentecost. But today we wear red because the Holy Spirit is who allows us to speak our faith and to proclaim our faith. It starts in baptism. Confirmation in the Lutheran Church is not a sacrament. There is no special grace here that you get other than maybe your choice of a piece of cake. Okay, it's not about some special thing other than saying, I am now going to take responsibility, even to the point of death, of the faith that I received when I was baptized. Ella can't do that yet. She's busy over there eating Cheerios and having fun. You, your job's a little more serious. And what I said this morning in the first service, because you guys weren't here as my object lesson, was that I wish you had to wear this for the rest of your lives. Just like I wish I could wear this every day, because I love it. I'm kidding, not really, but sort of. <laughs> because here's the deal. If you had to wear something out in the world every day that said Christian confirmed, it may actually make you think about how you live your life. But here's what we do. We, we play dress up every Sunday. We get dressed in something, we come to church, we sit here and we play Christian. And then we go back to school or go back to work or go back to life and we play dog eat dog, get what I want, survive. Well, we go, but, but life is so different now than it used to be. Really? Let's see what Paul's dealing with in Acts 17. Because last time we saw Paul, he was the guy holding the coats as they were killing Stephen. He was on the dark side. But now he knows who his father is, and he's come to the good side. You're all way too young. That was pretty funny. Um, anyway, Paul now is preaching the gospel. He shows up in Athens, and Athens is a place where people do what they feel is right. They have all kinds of gods in Athens, not just one. They don't want to miss out on anything, so they have a whole lot of gods. And Paul's walking around going, well, there's a god to that, there's a god to that, there's a god to that. There's even, there's even an altar and an idol to the unknown god. They're covering 
all their bases. In case we've missed a God, let's just worship him. So Paul comes in to say, let me tell you about this God that you don't know. And I'm sure all the people that were listening were like, well, we don't know him. What do we care? So he begins to tell them about the God that he knows. They begin, first of all, by welcoming with such kind words. What is this babbler saying? Because that's what the Christian words are to the world. Not just today, but a couple thousand years ago. Don't tell me that I am a creation of something else. Don't tell me that there is a God above all things because I'm a self-made person. I can create my own reality. Okay. And yet there is a God that says, no, that's not the case. But for those that don't want to hear it, it's just babbling and it's, it's busy talk. It's old-fashioned. Well, it was old-fashioned when it first started 2,000 years ago as well. So it has never been in style and it's always been out of style because we like to think we're in control. So Paul was babbling on to these people. Then they come and say he's got some kind of foreign divinities or gods he's talking about. Exactly. You are all today acknowledging that you are foreigners, that you're all here as immigrants, that you don't really belong here, that your passport no longer says world, but says heaven. Ella's passport changed today as well, from world to heaven. It's just that you probably wouldn't walk around Syria today waving a U.S. passport. I guarantee when we live in Morocco, we're not going to be wearing Old Navy clothes with American flags. I have lived in countries where I don't deny who I am, but I also don't broadcast it. And that's the reality with Christians as well. We don't want to deny it, but we don't want to broadcast it because it may become uncomfortable. It may actually get us in trouble. It doesn't matter what passport you hold, U.S. or not, we try to hide the fact that we're Christian because we are now foreigners in this place. Ella's a foreigner. She's just a really cute one. You've grown a bit more. Not that you aren't cute, but you're a bit bigger. And you realize, I want to fit in. Can I, can I pull out my passport on Sundays and then tuck it away because this foreign thing, I'm sticking out. Paul says, yeah, I'm sticking out because I'm bringing you something new. And the people in Athens said, well, this is strange. And that's what the world thinks. It's strange. Why would you submit yourself to a God who's creator? Why would you subject yourself to a higher authority? Why would you do all of that when we can evolve and develop and we can tap into our own inner sources? When scripture says the only thing you can tap into in yourself without God is sin, death, and the power of the devil, which Ella just said, by all of you, I don't want to do that. All of you are going to stand up and say, we don't want the power of the devil in us. You were baptized to get that to change. This was foreign in Athens. And then Paul continues to talk, continues to talk, and then talks about resurrection. And that's when most of the people said, done. You didn't have us really about any of the other stuff, but resurrection of the body, give me a break. Because we're not living thinking about eternity. We're living thinking about the next hot date. We're living thinking about the next bout of wine that we can get our hands on in Athens. We're thinking about the next food we can have. The Epicureans were all about good food. They were the original foodies. They could live in Portland, Oregon and fit right in with the foodie culture as they're on their way to hell. Because it's all about what tastes good and what is cool. And are we getting the attention of the paparazzi? And Paul comes in and says, but the resurrection means we're living forever. Like, we're just really kind of partying hard for this weekend. And they stopped listening. You are not going to be any different than Paul if you live your faith in the world. You're going to be considered old-fashioned. You're going to be considered sticks in the mud. You're going to be considered prudish. You're going to be considered all kinds of things because you're going to seem foreign. Welcome to life as a living, outside-the-box Christian. You wear this today, but I guarantee if you had to wear this down the hallway of school tomorrow, you'd be going, do I really have to get confirmed? 
Do I really have to wear this? You don't have to do anything. It's an opportunity. Paul steps into these people that said, you're crazy, you're a babbler, you're, you're, you're whacked. And he goes, okay. And here's what the rest of that story, how it finishes. It gets cut off in the text for today, but here's how it finishes. That ended Paul's discussion with them when they laughed at him. It ended the discussion. But some joined him and became believers. But some joined him. It wasn't one of these resounding Peter moments that we heard about a few weeks ago where Peter preached and 3,000 people became Christian. Paul was in there talking and some, a few, actually they list out three, said, I want to talk more about this. So if you're comparing who was more effective, Peter with 3,000 or Paul with three, well, Peter got the numbers, but Paul's in this kind of hostile territory. And that's where we live every day, is in a territory that says, I don't want a God unless I design that God. I want a God of my own choosing, as opposed to what the Bible says, that God chose you. God's chosen all of us. We don't get to design God. God designs us. And so Paul had a few. So here's what I would say. Confirmation and living a life of faith isn't about the great numbers. It isn't about any of that. It's about not worrying about all those who might scoff. It's not keeping track of there are multitudes who think I'm crazy. It's about keeping track of the some, the few that may say, I want to know more. I'm interested. It's not about how many don't listen. It's about the one or two that maybe might be in your life and might look at you and say, I want to talk more. I want to talk more. We're so concerned about all the people that don't believe that we forget it's not about that. It's about the few that might just see life differently because we're living life differently. Well, if I can't save the whole world, what's the point? You're not going to. You're not Jesus. But maybe there are a couple, one or two, some, that might go, can we talk more? Look how many said he was a babbler and an idiot and a, few, a fool, but a few said, can we talk? There might be an entire school that says, you're idiots, you're a babbler, you're a fool. You might be. But there might be a few that say, you seem different. That's why living what you believe, not just here on Sundays where it's safe, but living it out there is important. Not for the multitudes that say you're fools, but the few that say, can we talk more? You're going to stand up today, you're going to put your fingers in that water, you're going to remember your baptism, or you're going to say, you know what? I am going to be part of this relay team that takes the baton and I'm going to run this race with all the other cloud of witnesses because there may just be a few, a few people that I may come across that say, can I know more? It's not about who doesn't. It's about you're joining a team that says, we're about the few who do. That's what matters. Paul walked away from that and said, not my most successful day, except for those few. Didn't save them all but I got a few, and a few is what matters to God, those who God brings to you. So when I say, are you ready to do this even to the point of death, you might go, yeah, yeah, death is easy. What I want you to think about, I'm willing to do this to the point of wearing that tomorrow to school, and the next day, and the next day. Are you willing to wear the right robe and the red sash for the rest of your lives? That might be death. But that's how serious this is. Will I let the world know I'm different because I have a faith in Christ? Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. We take opportunity now to bring forward our tithes and offerings. You get to sit in the front row because I want you to see what it's like to sit here and what it's like to see the sweat on their faces. So kids, come on down. Come on down. You can sit right here. Squeeze in. Now look at that. He's going right to the end. Come in. Come in. See how you squeeze in. Come on down. Come on down.
It just got upgraded. Squeeze in. There's still room down here. You can sit next to Darren. He doesn't bite. There we go. Yeah, that's fine too. I know you have an ulterior motive. Okay, let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, better. Okay. Parents, sponsors, anyone that wants to stand behind, if there's an immediate family to stand behind and support the compromands, come on up and stand on the step behind the compromands. So if I'm a parent, I would stand here behind your child. Don't pick somebody else's. Why not? Yeah, you can if you want to. If you want to switch now, that's fine. There we go. Now remember what I said, Confirmands. You get to answer this together, but two things that you need to work on. Enthusiasm, yes, I want to die, and unison, so do it together, right? Okay, pretty simple answers. Ella got all the questions right, so I think all these years later, you should be able to at least get close, right? So do you this day in the presence of God and this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes. Oh, how quickly can you fail? <laughs> Enthusiasm and unison. Do you want another three years of this? Okay, let's try that again. Do you this day in the presence of God and this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God has given you in your baptism? Yes. Less pathetic. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Louder, in case like I'm deaf. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I do. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I do. Well, don't help him out back there. No help in the back. <laughs> They're too old for that. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes. I believe. Do I need to help you with this? Really, we talked about this on Friday. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let's try that again. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Now, how about on your own? I believe. I almost believe that. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord? Remember, it's long. It's not just yes. It's like the whole Apostles' Creed thing. You know the answer. It's like in your head. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I'm glad I do. I hope you said that. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Whew. Good job. Okay, at least you got the Holy Spirit part on your own. That's good. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Yes. Try that again, together, excitement. Do you believe in all the books of the Bible to be true? Yes. Good. Do you confess the doctrine of the Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures as you learned them from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Yes. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death or having to wear that tomorrow? <laughs> do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and do suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Okay. Well, we rejoice with thankful hearts. No, this is me. I'm just I'm trying to see if I'm really thankful or not. Um, that you have been baptized. Yes, I am. And received the teaching of the Lord. That you confess the faith and have been resolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament. 
He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Aiden, come on over. Right there. Mom and Dad, you can come over as well. Just in case he falls back, catch him or something. Aiden, remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. This is where you touch the water. There you go. Aiden, your verse is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> Aiden, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth in water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to let mom or dad hold this. You can see this later. It may say pass in there. You guys can go back. Emily, maybe I'll turn my ring around. <laughs> Remember your um, baptism? There you go, nicely done. Emily, your confirmation verses, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Emily, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. There you go. It's okay, you can go back. Matthew. Yep, come on down. Hold him up. Remember your baptism? Matthew, your verses, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Matthew, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Adele. Can you remember your baptism? Adelia, verses from John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Adele, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Abigail. I know, it's right there. I had to read it. It's right there. It's in print. <laughs> Abby, your verses from John 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. Oh, wait. This won't take, because you forgot to remember. I forgot to ask you. Remember your baptism. Whew, the whole Abigail thing threw me off. Now, let's try the whole verse. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Abigail, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Samantha. Does that mean you're in trouble when you hear that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It just says it right there. Sam, you want you, why don't you remember your baptism? And Sam, your confirmation verses. I have, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Sam. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Okay, you can just go back and do it. So those of you that are up here watching, just think someday, a few years from now, you might be sitting right here as well. You started there, and you're going to journey over here, and then you're going to journey out into the world, because that's what the Christian faith does. It doesn't just stay in here, it goes out and does things. Okay, so I'm going to have you return to your seats so that they can eventually go and sit down. So all of you can go back. Okay. 
And I will tell the congregation, and I will tell all of you. You've heard it in the confirmation interviews, but I'm going to remind you. When your kids said, yes, sort of, that I intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully, they said, I do, which means you are responsible for getting up and getting here. You don't, be the, you don't get to be the last one out of the house. You don't get to be the one going, oh, I don't want to go to church today. You said in front of your parents and the congregation that you're going to get here. So if I ever hear, well, I wasn't ready or my parents, no. You have said publicly, don't make liars of yourselves, that you're going to continue to be here. So moms and dads, next Sunday they should have the alarm set and ready to go. And if not, just go in and knock on the door and say, okay, liars, what are we doing? <laughs> because they said they want to faithfully be here. So they're going to take responsibility and get themselves dressed and ready to go. Got it? Welcome the new compromands into the family of God. <laughs> Confirmands, return to your seats so you have room for your parents to get back to their seats. And then congregation, please rise so that we can continue with the prayers of the